Hello Interstellar everyone, welcome to class 12 biology. In our previous video we discussed about biotechnological applications in agriculture in which we talked about uh, production or creation of pest resistant uh, plants such as PT cotton, right? And we also talked about the use of RNA interference in creation of uh, nematode resistant tobacco plants. Now in this particular video we will be talking about biotechnological applications in medicine in which we will talk about genetically engineered insulin, gene therapy and molecular diagnosis. Right. Now when we talk about the application of biotechnology or recombinant DNA technology in the human health care, in the area of human health care, recombinant DNA technology has enabled mass production of safe and more effective therapeutic drugs. In other words, the drugs which are produced by use of recombinant DNA technology, they are safe and they are more effective compared to the conventional uh, therapeutic drugs or chemical based drugs. Why? Because the recombinant therapeutics, they do not induce unwanted immunological responses as is common in the case of similar products isolated from non-human sources. Now in order to understand this second statement better, let us take the example of genetically engineered insulin. So insulin is a hormone which is involved in blood sugar regulation. A person suffering from diabetes, type 2 diabetes, uh, the person needs to take regular shots of insulin hormone because uh, the cells, the pancreatic cells of the diabetic patient, they cannot produce insulin. So uh, he, he or she cannot maintain his, uh, his or her blood sugar level. So in order to maintain his or her blood sugar level, the patient has to take insulin shots. Now, where does he, that uh, diabetic patient obtain this particular human insulin? He has to go and buy it from the market. And how is how does the insulin get into the market? It has to be produced by some kind of company, right? And in earlier days, these insulin, which were given to the diabetic patients, they were extracted from slaughtered cattle and pigs, right? The, uh, the cattle and uh, pigs, they were slaughtered their pancreas were removed and from the pancreas they used to extract the animal insulin. Now that insulin is an animal insulin not a human insulin. So therefore when animal insulin is injected into a diabetic patient, a human diabetic patient, the human diabetic patient sometimes uh, he shows, he or she shows allergic reaction. The immune system of that human being starts reacting in an undesirable manner. So it results in the uh, it results in allergic reactions, right? So that is uh, not desirable, right? So in order to avoid that, an American company called Eli Lilly in 1983, they prepared and introduced two DNA sequences into the plasmids of E. coli, thereby uh, making them produce human insulin, right? Making them, I mean, this E. coli, which now has got plasmids with two human DNA sequences in it, that these E. coli, they start producing human insulin. And these human insulin can be uh, milked from E. coli cultures in bioreactors, right? And now you may ask, why two DNA sequences? Why not just one DNA sequence and start producing human insulin? That is because in a normal human being, in a normal human being, the pancreatic cells, they first produce insulin in the form of pro-insulin form. It is not a functional protein yet. Right. That protein has to undergo some kind of modification to become a, a, a mature functional human insulin. Right. Inside the pro-insulin you can see three peptide chains. The blue one, the gray one and the green one. The blue one is the A peptide chain. The gray one is the C peptide chain and the green one is the uh, B peptide chain. After, un after it undergoes modification, uh, it results in the formation of a mature human insulin in which we only have the two peptide chains a peptide chain and b peptide chains are there they are linked together by disulfide bridge the c peptide chain is removed it is not required in the mature functional uh, human insulin now if the scientists they want to produce a functional human insulin from the bacterial cultures the scientists they can get rid of this c chain they can just just get rid of this particular uh, uh, free c peptide they don't need this one. So they took just the DNA sequence, two DNA sequences coding for A peptide and B peptide. They put it in the plasmids of E. coli, thereby the E. coli will produce these two peptides, A peptide and B peptide. And these two will be joined together by disulfide bridges right? and they can be used as human insulin. Right? So that is the reason behind the introduction of two DNA sequences in the plasmids of E. coli to produce human insulin. 
I hope it is clear. Right? Now, this human insulin produced genetically uh, produced by genetically engineered E. coli. This genetically engineered insulin, right? They have got certain in, uh, advantages over the insulin extracted from animals, right? Such as pigs and cattle. Uh, and those advantages are you can produce large quantities of human insulin now, right? You can produce this human uh, insulin in large quantities by use of bioreactors. We have studied about bioreactors before. Right. And if you use this genetically engineered insulin, right, they do not elicit adverse hum immune response or allergy. Right. There won't be any allergy because that is now a human insulin produced by the bacteria. Right. It's a human insulin produced by the bacteria. So therefore, these uh, genetically engineered insulin, they won't elicit adverse immune response. So you have to remember that. These are the two advantages. Right. If you use insulin extracted from pancreas or pigs and cattle, they will induce, they sometimes they induce adverse immune response or allergy so the genetically engineered insulin it was prepared so that they won't uh, cause allergy so i hope you are clear regarding genetically engineered insulin so genetically engineered insulin is a form of recombinant therapeutics let us now discuss about gene therapy so what is a gene therapy Gene therapy is a form of corrective therapy for hereditary diseases in which normal genes are inserted into cells and tissues to treat the disease. So we have studied about hereditary disease in our genetics unit. Right? So those diseases which are caused due to defects in the genes, they are called as hereditary disease. They can be passed down from parents to offsprings. Right? So gene therapy is a sort of corrective therapy for those kinds of diseases in which normal genes can be inserted into cells and tissues to treat the patient. One example is given in your textbook. One example of hereditary disease is given in your textbook that is ADA deficiency. ADA stands for adenosine deaminase. Right? This particular enzyme is extremely crucial for the proper functioning of a person's immune system. So ADA deficiency, this particular disease will lead to immunodeficient condition just like HIV AIDS. So that is quite a risky situation. It's quite a lethal disease. So, the first clinical gene therapy was done on a patient of ADA deficiency in 1990 and it, and it was a four-year-old girl named Ashanti De Silva. You don't have to remember her name. I just thought it would be useful for you to know that uh, the girl, four-year-old four year girl name was Ashanti De Silva. Right? So, the first clinical gene therapy was done on her. She was suffering from ADA deficiency due to deletion of a gene for adenosine deaminase. So in her treatment process, doctors, they introduced ADAC DNA into the lymphocytes of Ashanti herself. And uh, after introducing ADAC DNA into the lymphocytes of the Ashanti, uh, CDNA of lymphocyte Ashanti de Silva, the lymphocytes were injected back into uh, the patient. Right? Thereby, these lymphocytes, they can produce adenosine deaminase and she was treated. Now, she had there was a problem in this particular uh, solution it was a temporary solution because the lymphocytes they have got a lifespan around two months right so the lymphocytes they will die after two months uh, so she has to again go for the same process after two months right so that was a temporary uh, solution now uh, it may be possible in future that if this particular disease is diagnosed quite early in the embryonic in early embryonic stages a functional ADA gene can be introduced into the cells at early embryonic stage and that could become a permanent cure I hope it is clear right now this cDNA it's a complementary DNA cDNA stands for complementary DNA and this cDNA they are pr produced by reverse transcription process from the mRNA coding for uh, adenosine deaminase right so such kind of DNA can be introduced into the lymphocytes of the patient uh, cultured in vitro and these lymphocytes they can be injected back into the patient so that the patient can be treated temporarily right so as soon as the lifespan of these lymphocytes these transformed lymphocytes they are over the patient can revisit the doctor and the process can be repeated now if you want to make the process permanent right if you want to make this treatment permanent uh, the disease has to be diagnosed at, at early embryonic stage so that the cells at the early embryonic stage they can be injected with the functional ADA DNA right functional ADNA DNA and then uh, the person can get rid of this particular hereditary disease right? and uh, the person's children 
won't suffer from radiate efficiency as well so now there one there is one question for you over here you can copy this down and try to find answers for that this has been asked in previous board exams right how is gene therapy the one which have been the one which we have studied about just right now it is better than bone marrow transplantation or enzyme replacement therapy right these are bone marrow transplantation and enzyme replacement therapy these are two therapies which are used apart from uh, gene therapy for the treatment of adenosine deaminase deficiency please you you have to find uh, answers for this one okay let us now discuss about the applications of biotechnology and its tools in molecular diagnosis of diseases right so in this particular process the conventional methods such as serum and urine analysis they are not good for early diagnosis of the diseases right serum and urine analysis analysis right? they are the conventional methods used for diagnosis of diseases they are not good for early diagnosis of the diseases right so instead of using these conventional methods we can use our dna technology recombinant dna technology polymerase chain reaction and enzyme linked immunosorbent assay they can help in early diagnosis for example we can use pcr or polymerase chain reaction for the early detection of the presence of pathogens within the human body right normally what happens is the presence of these pathogens such as bacteria and viruses they are suspected only when the person is showing some kind of disease symptoms right by that time the viral load or the bacterial concentration within the person's body has become very very large right so that uh, the pathogens must have caused a significant amount of damage within the patient's body now in order to avoid that right we have to detect the presence of the bacteria and virus in their lowest concentration so that is possible by use of pcr by use of pcr we can amplify the genetic material of the bacteria or virus thereby detecting their presence in their lowest concentration so that we can avoid right certain kind of diseases early hand so we can start uh, treatment procedures right so we can use pcr for that particular process and regarding that you can try to find out more information on the use of real time uh, rt pcr in the diagnosis of the current covid-19 virus coronavirus right you must have heard about two different processes right rapid antigen testing and uh, real time uh, rt pcr so you can try to find out some more information regarding rt pcr in the diagnosis of the presence of coronavirus in people right so uh, that is one assignment and this particular uh, pcr method or polymerase chain reaction is also used to detect mutations in the genes right mutations in the genes in suspected cancer patients and it can also be used for the detection of uh, other genetic disorders as well so pcr is quite a useful tool in molecular diagnosis of different kinds of diseases as well as the path uh, presence of pathogens within the human body and then we have radioactive tagging method to detect gene mutations right in this radioactive tagging method a single stranded dna or rna molecule is tagged with radioactive molecules thus creating a probe right and then this particular probe is allowed to hybridize to its complementary dna sequence in a clone of cells now remember these cells they are been taken out from the suspected patient's body and they are allowed to grow in vitro right and uh, the probe is allowed to hybridize to its complementary dna in the clone of cells and by using autoradiography right it's an imaging technique we can detect the cells with the mutated genes right now remember the cells with the mutated gene they will not appear on the x-ray film because uh, the cell containing mutated genes they don't have the necessary complementary dna sequence required by the probe to bind to right so we we can use radioactive tagging to detect gene mutations okay so then uh, next we have enzyme linked immunosorbent assay method or elisa method it is used to detect infection by pathogens right in this particular method uh, the method itself is based upon the principle of antigen antibody interaction remember antigen antibody interaction is very specific antibody is the y shaped molecule produced by b cells right so uh, antigen is attacked by a particular antibody a particular antigen will always be attacked by a particular antibody so the antigen antibody interaction is quite specific so enzyme linked immunosorbent assay is based upon this specificity of antigen antibody interaction right so infection of pathogen right if a person's body is infected by a particular pathogen uh, the pathogen can be detected by 
the presence of the antigens of the pathogen itself or by the presence of antibodies produced by the produced by the person's uh, patient's body against the pathogen right for example we have studied about uh, the diagnosis of hiv infection is done by elisa method right so these are the tools which are used in uh, molecular diagnosis of different kinds of disorders within the human body right for or for the presence of pathogens within the human body and these tools they are all uh, present in the uh, are recombinant dna technology okay so in the next uh, video we will be discussing about transgenic animals and ethical issues associated with biotechnology so please read about these two topics and then you can watch the next video thank you